If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to determine the electric potential at point P. We know that the electric potential produced by a single point charge is equal to a constant times the value of that charge divided by the distance from that charge to whichever point you're interested in determining the electric potential at. Now, the total electric potential at a particular point would simply be the sum of the individual potentials. Notice that electric potential is a scalar quantity, which means we do not have to break it up into x and y components. So, to calculate this total electric potential, we can fill in an expression for V1. So we would have K multiplied by Q1 over R1, and then the same thing for V2. If we wish, we can actually factor out the K, and that would leave us with Q1 over R1 plus Q2 over R2. And then we can fill in the known values. K is a constant, and it has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. Q1 would be the charge on particle 1. That was stated to be negative 2 times E. So that would be negative 2 multiplied by the elementary charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And then divided by the distance from charge 1 to point P, which would be D1, and that was given to us in the problem as 4 meters. For charge Q2, we were told that it has a value of positive 2e, so we'll have positive 2 multiplied by the elementary charge. Might run off the screen here, and then we're going to divide by the distance from charge 2 to point P. That distance was indicated to be d2, and that was stated as 2 meters. So we can pick up our calculators and type this all in, and we should get approximately 7.19 times 10 to the minus 10 and the standard unit of electric potential is volts, so this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, we are asked how much work do we do if we bring a particle of charge positive 2E from infinity to point P. Now the potential at infinity is assumed to be zero. That was actually stated in the question right here. We know that the work done in moving a charged particle is equal to its charge times the change in the electric potential. Now we are moving a charge whose value is positive 2 times the elementary charge, so we would have 2 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And then for delta V, we can remember that delta notation means that you have the final electric potential minus the initial electric potential. Well, if we're moving it to point P, then the final electric potential will be the 7.19 times 10 to the minus 10 volts that we just determined. And then the initial electric potential would be that at infinity, which we stated to be zero. Of course, we can omit the minus zero part, and then we can pick up our calculator and determine this quantity. And we should end up with about 2.38, excuse me, 2.30 times 10 to the minus 28. And the standard unit of work is joules. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C, we need to know the equation that gives us the potential energy that exists between two charged particles. Now that formula looks like the following. We have that same constant multiplied by the first charge and then multiplied by the second charge divided by the distance between them. Now what we have to do to get the total potential energy is to make this computation multiple times. And we'll have to do it for the pair of charges Q1 and Q3. We'll do it for the pair of charges Q3 and Q2, and then we'll do it a third time for the pair of charges Q1 and Q2, and in order to do that third pair, we'll end up having to find this distance right here. Now that's just the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and so we know that the length of that hypotenuse would be the square root of d1 squared plus d2 squared. That result comes from using the Pythagorean theorem. If you have any questions about how we found that, let me know in the comments. So again, we'll proceed to setting up three calculations of the electrical potential energy. And we can begin with Q1 and Q3. So we've filled in the charges Q1, Q3, and then the distance between them is D1. We can then move on and fill in the similar expression for the potential energy between Q2 and Q3. And then finally, we will do the same for the potential energy between Q1 and Q2. 
We can then go ahead and plug in the values of the charges Q1, Q2, and Q3, which were stated in the question. And then if we look carefully, we can see we have some common factors. Every term has a K, and then every term also has an E squared, because we have E times E in the numerators. So we're going to actually factor out for simplicity a factor of KE squared. And that's going to leave us with negative 4 over D1, we're getting 4 by multiplying the 2 and the 2, plus 4 over D2, and then we're going to have a minus, because we have a minus sign right here, 4 over the square root of D1 squared plus D2 squared. And then we'll pick up our pencils and plug in the known values. K was 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. We know E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And then we know the distance is D1 and D2, so we'll fill those in. Let's process that on our calculators, and we should get about 2.43 times 10 to the minus 29. And once again, since we use standard units, the unit here would be the standard unit joules. So this will be the correct answer to part C.